Tornado pilots in Afghanistan have been benefiting from state-of-the-art technology used on typhoon jets. High-tech helmets have changed the way crews are able to engage their weapons and support troops on the ground. Kai Lark has been for an exclusive look around the site where they're made. Flying high over the Welsh countryside, this simulator allows staff and RAF crews to test out the latest helmet technology before it reaches the front line. This is the Typhoon helmet being demonstrated. It contains the most advanced helmet technology in the world, allowing the pilot and aircraft to communicate. Using optical sensors or nodes on the back, the aircraft is able to produce a 360 degree view for the pilot of the ground, terrain and therefore threat that might be outside. On the back of the helmet, we've got our optical head tracking system. This consists of clusters on the back of the helmet which emit infrared light. Only four of these lights are on at a time and they're tracked by cameras like this around the cockpit. And on a typical aircraft like Typhoon, you've got one in the, on the back of the seat as there and then two forward on the centre dashboard to give the pilots this 360 degree look around so there's no place they can put their head that doesn't track. And this is the technology that's been adapted for use on the Tornado through the Urgent Operational Requirement System. The new kit has been added to the existing Mark 10 helmet used for day flying and now includes a reticle on the front which projects symbols onto the visor and these allow the pilot and aircraft to talk to each other. Some of the technology in the upgraded Tornado helmet has been taken from the more advanced Typhoon helmet. Whilst it's been rigorously tested here in the simulator, the real test is for those using it on operations in Afghanistan. In theatre, it means that when the pilot identifies a target or point of interest on the ground, it can be marked and then no matter which direction the aircraft points, it can tell the pilot where that target is. It also means that weapons can be engaged without the aircraft needing to fly directly at it, increasing pilot survivability. But this is a downgraded version of that which is used on the Typhoon. The Tornado helmet was an urgent operational requirement. It had to be in theatre fast, it had a specific function to perform for the tornado operational role uh, and it had a specific budget to meet. And the helmet we delivered performs that function well um, and it was in theatre on time and on budget. Those targets were achieved with these helmets being made mostly by hand. Here on the production line, it takes staff two weeks to assemble each one, and it can take up to two years to train someone in the intricacies of the work. You have to be very careful what you're doing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to be saving someone's life, so you just have to have that in the back of your mind every time you're picking up the job. Some stages, such as printing circuit boards, are done by machine, but then these are some of the most high-tech helmets being made anywhere. We have some of the most complex products in the world that deliver the best um, opportunity uh, for a pilot to be effective in what he or she does. Um, also, obviously, we make a number of things uh, for other uh, platforms, but, but we are at the pinnacle of technology and we do make the most complex products in the world in terms of helmets, certainly the most efficient, most effective. Yeah, it makes me feel good to be part of the helmet build. I mean. I think anyone is kind of proud to make one of these things. There are a number of simulators here at BAE's Rochester site and whilst none of them can be used for a type rating on an aircraft, it does mean the helmets can be tested in extreme ways. And sometimes we do deliberate test experiments to say what happens if we do this, so for example, push it and push it and push it until half long before it becomes unusable or what, what, how far can it go in one range or another, what if we try and put it to this test and then, and then combine it with other cockpit systems as well because it's not just about the product we're actually doing, it's how it integrates with the rest of the cockpit and we can, we can do some testing on that. And that feedback is crucial to ensure the pilots and crews operating on the front line are receiving the most advanced technology possible. Kyle Ark, Forces News in Rochester.